in this episode of How to Be Stupid. So, about the soldering iron, I praised to the heavens and back. Yeah, we ran into a problem. This one, remember? You can guess what is the issue. Temperature. Even though you can calibrate the temperature electronically from inside, for some reason, and I don't know which one, yeah, the temperature is just not accurate. So I didn't know what was the case, what was up. And then I disassembled the switch. And I remembered, yes, they have these. It's a crappy wire gauge. It's barely a wire gauge. I mean, I made it into a solid core wire by soldering it together. So I'm going to try to do two things today. I'm going to disassemble it and replace the cable with a better one, uh, with a thicker gauge, and uh, hopefully ground the soldering iron. Because, as I've mentioned in the video before, it's not, it's not grounded. And I don't really like that very much. So let's try to disassemble it. First of all, let's disassemble the tip. You unscrew it. Okay. I like to use this screwdriver tip and then you unscrew this part and yeah it has never been unscrewed before okay and the heating element can be pulled out because it's plugged in it's an 80 watt heating element okay next up I'm gonna have to get under this LCD display, okay, got it. This cover was just, this cover was just stuck on with a, with some adhesive, okay. Now you take a Phillips screwdriver and get the screws out. And last but not least, this cable protector. Okay, it's off, and this rubber part, which is like supposed to protect you from burning your hands, is going off. And this is probably some warranty sticker thing, but since we bought it from AliExpress, who's going to provide the warranty? Seriously. Okay. Okay, let's open it. And we're in. Now this really makes me mad. As you can clearly see, they built a PCB that can support the earth connection, but they didn't solder any. They just used regular live and neutral, but no earth connection. Now that's, that's dumb. That's, that's, that's really dumb. Let's get it off. Let's 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 cut it out. Let's cut it out because we're mad. Okay, the cable goes up, and as you can see, the design is fairly simple. I mean, it has a MOSFET that turns it on and off using a PWM signal. That is all right. That's okay. Um, what's next? They have an LCD display. These are two switches. Uh, there's probably a microcontroller under this LCD display. I'm not gonna remove it. I like it being stuck there, but let's 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 just zoom in and let's see. Yes, there's a microcontroller down there. Okay, we're gonna replace the wires. And uh, this connection here, I I don't like this. This doesn't have enough solder. This is this is BS. This is hanging by a thread. This is this is not good. Oh, oh, I don't like this. Oh, cheap Chinese garbage. Okay, we're gonna have to intervene over there too. So let's add a little bit more solder. I mean, there is contact here, but I like to thicken the trace a little bit. So let's do that. I just strip the new wires. This is the. This is the cable that is usually sold 
for uh, clothes irons. Well, at first it has a ground wire, an earth connection, and as you can see, this is the last wire, and this is the new one. So we're gonna put this one. First, let's tin the wires. We're gonna be using our old friend, the USB powered soldering iron here, and we're gonna be using it in the medium mode. Okay, let's tin it up a little bit. Nice. Let's put it in the solder paste and beautiful. Now same goes for the rest. They're tinned. Let's remove all wires from the contacts. Mm -hmm. We remove the old wire. Let's get some solder wick. Okay. Let's put the new solder in. And I'm sorry, I don't like the look of this solder. Um, the solder wire was some El Cheapo that I got in my hometown and it looks really bad. I would like to wig it off. Seriously, it looks really bad. Okay. Okay, it's nice and clean. I will use this thicker gauge solder, but it's supposed to be completely cool, clean, and leaded. Nice. As you can see, it's really shiny, so it is leaded. None of that lead-free rubbish. As Dave Jones says. And nice. Now, I made this mistake a million times so I'm just gonna warn you do not do the same and first put this cable protector in now since this cable is a bit thicker I might have to cut it a little bit shorter and yes before we go anywhere else done that's number one Let's add some old-fashioned plugs here. And what is the old-fashioned flux? It's the plumber's flux. And no, not the corro corrosive kind, the, the little mild type. Okay. Now that's good. That's going to conduct some serious current. Okay. Now let's try to reassemble it. But, but first, it needs some good cleaning. Let's get some IPA. First, let's clean this disgusting residue. Okay. And let's use a cotton swab to clean the contacts and the board. It's looking cool and shiny. Let's clean the upper part. Okay. Nice, clean, and shiny. 
Beautiful. Let's try to assemble it in the box. The good news is I know what to do. The bad news is I'm gonna have to solder it inside the case. And I hate that more than anything. Let's focus. Let's get the wire in. And let's solder the live wire first. Elk. And there it is. The live wire is done. Next, the neutral. And this is what can actually create a problem sometimes. See this? This is a stray little wire. You remove the stray wires, always. Okay, next. The next wire. The neutral one. Goes in. I will touch up everything again with flux. Okay, the third one. It goes in. Okay. Let's retouch everything with flux. I just want to retouch the last one because it looks like a cold solder joint and I and I and I hate cold solder joints. Let's just retouch it. Done. Okay, let's test everything with a multimeter. Multimeter in continuity mode. Okay. Okay. Good. Let's see. Nice. No shorts. Great. Let's put the heating element in. I mean, heating element is not a short, it's it's more of a resistor, but let's make sure. Continuity, or heating element. But that's okay, let's reassemble the soldering iron back as it was. I turned off the multimeter. Good. Good. Okay. I mean, everything looks all right. If I had the solder mask, I would put the solder mask over that so, so I'd prevent any unnecessary and unwanted shorts, but I'm not worried about them. Let's clean it. Clean the contacts with a bit of IPA because we touched it up with uh, with the flux. Nice and shiny. Great. Uh, what's next? The next thing is this thing. Okay, I put it back together somehow. Let's screw it on. Now if I flip the color of the switches, I don't really care that much. I'll just see which one 
which one rises, which one falls, and I will adjust as needed. Okay, I got everything back. Let's put the heating element back on. Hopefully not in reverse, great. The heating element is on. Then this holder. This holder actually used to contain a spring so that this part would be grounded as well. But let's see. Let's see when we assemble it completely. What will it say? Okay, one last time before we plug it in, let's check the continuity with our multimeter. Okay. The tip is not earthed. Again. Which is a problem. I don't like that fact. <sighs> Damn it. Okay. I will think of something with a spring, or I will just stop effing around and get a real soldering iron. A good legit soldering station. Okay, let me just plug it in. Oh my god. So the breaker popped. I might have cut it on camera. I don't know. Something uh, smelled like burning, as Ralph Wiggum would say. I'm just gonna open and see what got destroyed. Where was the short? I was wrong to tell you that this is the perfect iron for you. It's definitely not. Let's see what died inside. God damn it. I mean, thank God, the breakers and the installations in this apartment building are great. Okay. God damn it. It's the microcontroller. It burned. I don't know how well you could see it, but it burned and shorted everything else. Now, I did test the continuity mode. You saw that there was no short. Is there a short now? Still no short. I mean, well, of course there's no short. Everything got completely destroyed. Hmm. What did I do wrong? I have no idea. So guys, this is an embarrassing moment for me, but I'm still going to upload the video. I don't care. Uh, I take it back. Don't get these cheap garbage soldering irons. Just don't. I take it back. I was wrong. Don't. Or your board will end up looking like this charred, burnt the F up, and smelling like garbage. The liquid crystal display was destroyed. Everything else was destroyed. I don't, I have no idea what happened. Except that it's cheap Chinese made BS. And yeah, I got nothing else to add except don't buy this. Just don't. Um, the explosion happened back here. I mean, it looks like this trace here burnt completely. If anyone can, could point me where I went wrong, I would appreciate, but this here and earth are supposed to be connected. This is where they usually connect the spring so they can earth the tip. Even if you put the earth connection on, the tip is not earthed because I'm not gonna reverse engineer this. I really don't care. I'm just glad that everything's okay, that I'm okay, that nothing in the house popped. 
and that is it. I mean, thanks for watching, but I'm left here feeling like a total dunce, not knowing what I did wrong. I mean, you saw the continuity. There was no apparent short. I have no idea what happened. And somebody smarter than me needs to explain this. I'm just dumbfounded. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. Don't buy this. I was wrong. While editing the video, I've pulled up a couple of screenshots. In the first picture, you can see that charring clearly happened on the back side of the PCB, aka the side where I've connected the wires. Now, if we zoom in a little bit, we can see that the PCB traces between the neutral and the earth wire is completely destroyed. And it was almost turned to carbon. When I scraped it, it, it started flaking off. On the first inspection and when I've taken a look at the backside of the PCB, everything looked okay. But when I zoomed in really well, you can clearly see that there is a speck of something. Is it a piece of solder, a piece of wire, a stray wire? I have no idea. Now, this might be a long shot. And I don't know. Some of you may tell me, you know, dude, a spark gap, a spark gap. Yes, actually, a spark can cross this distance. No problem. And that that is all okay. But what I do think is more likely that it happened. When you look at the European type of plug, you can see that it's not polarized like the ones in the UK or the US. So that means that our live and neutral connections can be connected in reverse. Now, why would that be a problem? Well, what I do think is uh, that when the MOSFET uh, on the PCB opens, the neutral and the earth wire get connected. The neutral wire is earthed on the PCB itself, but only when a MOSFET is open. And you can see where I'm going, going with this right now, right? If I connect the live and neutral in reverse, the blue wire can become live when the MOSFET opens I've essentially shorted the live wire to earth ground. And that would be a very good explanation why the breaker in my wall popped. It pulled so much current that, yeah, a bang is the only logical thing that would happen. I mean, I don't know. If you guys know or if anyone has taken the time to reverse engineer this, please tell me in the comments below where did I go wrong. Was I stupid in this situation? Absolutely, but uh, I really, <laughs> I mean, this soldering iron cost 15 bucks and I really didn't want to reverse engineer it. And I was too mad and too angry in this situation to do anything about it. So thanks for your patience and thanks for watching and uh, be smarter than I was in this situation and learn from my mistakes. <laughs> okay, uh, catch you in the next video and bye-bye guys.